He had just left Badlands National Park in South Dakota, headed to Billings, Montana. From there, made her way to Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Park. But with our traveling in between, we definitely had to make a stop at Custer State Park and drive Needles Highway. It was beautiful, beyond words, absolutely gorgeous. The Needles Highway is more than a 14 mile road. It's a spectacular drive through pine and spruce forests, meadows surrounded by birch and aspen and rugged granite mountains. The road's name comes from the needle-like granite formations that seem to pierce the horizon along the highway. Winding drives throughout the park are most enjoyable at a slower pace. However, we have sped this up so you can see this in less than 11 minutes. But if you're going to go to the park and drive Needles Highway, then make plans and allow ample time to travel at a safe speed, generally 25 miles per hour or slower. Expect travel time of about 45 to 60 minutes to enjoy Needles Highway. At this point coming into the park, there is an entry fee of $20, so if you want to drive Needles Highway, be prepared, you do have to pay the daytime fee. We are coming up on one of the most famous parts of the drive. It's the Needle Eye Tunnel. This one-way tunnel is only 8 feet 4 inches wide by 12 feet high. So make sure your vehicle will fit through before starting up the highway because once you reach the tunnel, there isn't much room to turn around. If you're claustrophobic, I would not recommend going through this tunnel. It's called Needle's Eye Tunnel for a good reason. It is the narrowest tunnel in South Dakota. Only one car at a time can go through, and believe it or not, huge charter buses squeeze through daily too. We are very big into camping, and Custer State Park definitely looks like a destination that we would want to come back to again. It's known for its free-ranging bison herd. With some 1,500 animals, it's one of the largest bison herds in the world. Pronghorn, deer, elk, mountain goats, bighorn sheep, mountain lions, burros, prairie dogs, coyotes, eagles, and wild turkeys are other residents of the park's variety of habitats. We did see quite a few buffalo on this road, but unfortunately we had just turned off the camera when we saw all of the buffalo, so that kind of stinks. But we do have a great picture at the end of this where the buffalo is just about to relieve himself and it was quite a funny sight. Wow. Yeah, so I know. Cool. You and I, we're not as big a deal as we think we are. Want to stop here? With this okay. picture? It carries us. Okay, sure. It's much mightier than we imagined. Like that right off needles. Pretty impressive. If you find yourself in this area, Mount Rushmore and Custer State Park are right next door to each other. We had just left Mount Rushmore before arriving here. The hours at Mount Rushmore are 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. We got there before 8 a.m., so nothing was open yet. But it was pretty neat going to the park and kind of having it all to yourself. It's a lot smaller than we initially expected but it was, it was a neat visit. 
What is really cool is not too terribly far from here is Crazy Horse Memorial, and that is a sight to behold. The amount of work that they're doing on that mountain to make Crazy Horse sit on his horse pointing out is beyond words incredible. On our way to Billings, Montana, we also stopped in Deadwood, and that was pretty neat experience. It was kind of like Las Vegas, but with Western and Cowboys. There were a lot of bars everywhere and music everywhere. It was a pretty interesting atmosphere. While we were there, we toured a brothel, and it was operated illegally in the city from 1876 until 1980. I was literally almost born. I was four years away from being born and there was a illegal brothel. I find that kind of crazy that it was remained open that long. Brothels were a fixture on the second story of buildings in Deadwood's Main Street for more than a century. Local sex workers had an impact on the development of the community in the 19th and 20th century. Visitors will be transported through this 104 year story with a guided tour of the rooms at 610 Main Street, the original site of the Shasta Rooms brothel. The rooms are curated with a variety of period-appropriate furnishings, which was actually pretty neat. Each room was set up in the period that you would have seen it in had it been in 1876, 1960, 1980. That was kind of cool how they transformed each room and set it up in a way that it would have existed. If you're interested in footage from our Yellowstone visit, we have an ample amount of videos from Yellowstone in our three days time there. We've got hiking adventures, waterfalls, geysers, beautiful pools. It was a once in a lifetime trip and I hope you enjoy the footage if you do find your way there and looking at our YouTube channel. In Jackson Hole, we went whitewater rafting down the Snake River, and that was a lot of fun. It was our very first time to go whitewater rafting, and I thought that we would feel a little unsafe because you're in a small boat and you've got rapids coming at you, but honestly, I never once felt like we were going to tip over, so I found that pretty interesting while whitewater rafting. A funny story with that is that we are from Texas and when we arrived there we were going back and forth we as in my husband and I were going back and forth as to whether or not we needed wetsuits and this was in September mid-September and so it took about five ten minutes discussing do we want to spend the money on wetsuits well finally someone there that worked there overheard us talking and she said oh you're from Texas I wish you would have said that a long time ago yes you most definitely in wetsuits and I'm glad we got wetsuits cuz the water was freezing when we visited Grand Teton National Park we hiked around Jenny Lake went past Inspiration Point and then made our way into Cascade Canyon that hike was probably the most 
beautiful hike that we've ever been on. Being in the canyon and the mountains surrounding you and the river that ran through it and the changing colors of the leaves, it was just beyond gorgeous. But I will say that day we hiked roughly like 19 miles and so when we got in the car after our hike and we were finishing the loop at Grand Teton National Park, our very first stop to get out, we both basically just fell on the pavement because our legs were dead and that was pretty funny. We hope you enjoyed the drive through Custer State Park. If you would like to see another one, then check out Beartooth Pass. That one is pretty insane and incredible. If you enjoyed this video, then hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Because really, why not?